Hello Otis. Hi Andrea. And welcome to our Urongo Talk viewers. Yes, it's our 156th episode mm -hmm. of Urongo Talk today. Sure. Yes, and uh, we are at the Swakop Munt Go Karts. Yes. So, so what does the show hold? Today, so basically as usual, I mean Otis is going to bring you the latest news, the weather and tides and now for our interview segment we're going to do something different today because we are going to chat to ourselves. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so me, Otis, um, Adolf and Irina Marie is going to chat about what were our highlights um, and lowlights and our message that we'd like to give you for the yeah. 2021. Yeah. So, and today I believe we're also celebrating Make Up Your Mind Day. Yes, yes, so I think yes. it's a fitting day for the last year, or the last day oh, of yeah. 2020, uh -huh. 2020. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. start today's new segment with an update on the current COVID-19 situation in the country. The Minister of Health and Social Services, Kalumbi Shangula, announced 482 new COVID-19 confirmed cases identified from 2,236 results received from the laboratories yesterday. Now basically this represents a 22% positivity ratio and the gender distribution of the reported cases is 276 females to 206 males, so it's a lot more females than males this time around. Mm -hmm. Now the age range is from one month to 98 years old. So Comas recorded 227 cases in Banduk, Karas 63 uh, from Ketman's Wap 31, Karasper 18 and Udrats 14. Irongo recorded 63 cases, uh, 23 in Wofa Bay, 16 in Swakopmund, 14 in Usakos and 10 in Omaruru. Yes, now the Commerce region represents 47% um, of all confirmed cases. Now among the Winduk district cases, there are 11 employees from the Ocean Basket restaurant. Now new cases are sporadically located from all suburbs. Now it is one concern that um, yesterday 220, that's 46% of the confirmed cases are from the young and productive age group, which is about 20 to 39 years um, of age. Now they also, rep um, yesterday the minister also announced 25 healthcare workers among the confirmed cases and are distributed as follow, 13 from Wintuk, 3 from Ketman's Wop, 2 each from Wolfish Bay and Oshakati, and 1 each from Ludrits, Gubavas, Okaanya, Ochivarongo and the Marintal districts. It's, uh, it's like you said, they no more the, 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 the front line workers, yes, they, they are, are now the our last, last line, line of defense. defense. Yes. Yeah, so of the total new confirmed cases, 185, that's 38% are contacts to confirmed cases and 242, 50% are symptomatic. So the minister said that uh, as we are nearing the 2020 sunset and approaching the new year, it's everyone's responsibility to make sure that our families, friends, relatives, neighbours, workmates, communities and our country is safe by adhering to health and hygiene protocols rem recommended for our yes. own protection. Yes. Now yesterday um, we also recorded a record number I believe of 912 recoveries mm. which brings the total um, number of recoveries to 19,655. Our recovery rate is about 84%. So the total number of active cases currently stands at 3,479. And uh, the minister also announced uh, 169 
hospitalized, hospitalized confirmed cases of which 36 are in intensive care units and the uh, commerce region represents 46 percent of all hospitalized confirmed cases. Now the minister also announced one COVID-19 death of a 50-year-old male from Vintuk was, who had known um, comorbidities and he passed away on the 26th um, of December, that was on Family Day. Now the total COVID deaths in the country now stand at one, um, 196. Mm. Now our second story, uh, although we started, on, uh, started off on somehow uh, on a negative note, it, it develops into something very positive. Now listen to this. Of Namibia's 2.5 million population, more than half are unemployed and over 100,000 persons live with some form of disability, which puts them at an even greater disadvantage when it comes to job opportunities. One natural diamond cutting and polishing company decided to do something about this. Now the Andre Masika Cutting and Polishing Facility proactively recruits from Namibia's disabled community and today more than a third of the company's employees are living with a disability. Now productivity has improved along with employee morale and each morning a custom built company bus provides transport to help disabled employees get to work. Well, now the project began in 2007 when uh, Schatzer and Namdar, founding partner of the Andre Masika facility, first set up operations in Namibia. Uh, we decided to embark on employing disabled people because quite simply we believe in equal opportunities where everyone should have a right to work and feel socially included, said Mark Friedman the operations director at the company. Now it says, uh, he says that it took about two years to bring in the first group of people where to adapt the factory for wheelchair users and also brought in sign language interpreters. Now today I'm proud to say we're the biggest employer of disabled people in Namibia. Now in the Namibia headquarters, 16 of 42 employees are living with a disability and this number is expected to increase in 2021. Now Anna Marie Johnson, uh, uh, 26, was one of the first disabled employees uh, a wheelchair user since she was injured in a swimming pool accident at the age of eight. Uh, eight. Anna Marie is now an experienced diamond polisher whose work is admired by global brands. Uh, she said that growing up in the kind of neighborhood I did, I didn't get a degree uh, or papers to even get a job. So uh, who would want to employ a wheelchair bound girl who was disabled and not educated? But then one day a man recogni I recognized from TV stopped me in the street and asked me what I was doing with my life. When I said nothing, he said he had something that could help and he picked me up on Monday morning. A bus came and he kept picking up disabled people. As we were driving, he explained to me about the opportunity. Kona Teopolina Sivinena is in her early 30s, mother to a young baby and works as a stock controller. She was born with a hearing impairment. Now, prior to starting work, she didn't consider looking for a job as she think that there would, there, would any, there would be any point because people see that I can't hear, I can't talk, they think I'm unable to do the job. Not only does the company recruit wheelchair users and men and women with hearing impairments, it also proactively welcomes people from a wide spectrum of age groups. So like the Natural uh, Diamond Council, the Andre Masika Cutting and Polishing Facility takes their corporate social responsibility very seriously and places its workforce and local communities at the center of its operation. The company's training program takes years before they yield highly skilled professionals that are true experts in the field, providing crucial employment opportunities that would otherwise elude many of those living with a disability. Anna Joseph Kunyenga, production manager at the company, says that the quality and productivity of the company has improved since people living with a disability were invited to join their workforce. Now he says that the quality of diamond cutting and polishing that we see from our team is on another level. We invest in training and make sure we have a supportive and encouraging working environment where people can thrive and feel proud of the work they do. They are professional diamond cutters and polishers, added Friedman. And uh, it continued, if you look at those who are hearing impaired, their concentration levels are much higher. They are totally focused without distractions. Our employees are so committed to their jobs, to growing in the company and learning more things all the time. Now, uh, Raluca Angel, uh, head of external affairs at Natural Diamond Council, emphasized that diversity is fundamental to the sex, uh, success of any business. Yes, now the factory in the Mobile is a shining example of, of how to create a happier, more productive working environment. 
Now, what this diamond um, company has achieved is an inspiration not only to the diamond world, but to every employer. Now, every human deserves the same opportunities. Yes, and uh, and now. Uh following story, uh, the previous uh, Wolfers Bay Municipal Council, and I must emphasize the previous yes. Municipal Council, decided that an additional two hectares of Farm 38 can be leased to King Charcoal Namibia for the purpose of establishing a charcoal bagging and brickwood uh, manufacturing plant. So the former chairperson of the Management Committee, Councillor Lilo Nilenga, said at a meeting held, it was decided that one hectare of Farm 38 be leased by private transaction to the company for five thousand dollars, Namabin dollars plus seven hundred and fifty Namabin dollars, fifty percent VAT per month, escalating with ten percent per annum for production and packaging of charcoal. Yes. Now, furthermore, she said that um, King Charcoal has now applied for additional land on the current lease at Farm Thirty Eight to establish a charcoal bagging and briquette um, uh, manufacturing plant. They requested the original lease be extended from ten to twenty years, with an option to renew for a further period of twenty years. So the company has already done earthworks and construction of their uh, lease site and is fully operational from the new factory on Farm 38, but would like to expand business. Yes, now currently they are exporting raw charcoal products in bulk without adding potential to the product. Now value adding is mainly confined to bagging charcoal directly for foreign retailers in their branded craft paper bags and briquette manufacturing from the smaller charcoal fractions. So uh, back then, Nilenga said that the applicants aspire to do both these activities on Farm 38 and that the estimated capital required for the project is more than 20 million, 20 million, million yes. Namibian dollars. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, so therefore the applicant is requesting a longer lease period to substantiate the capital investment to be made. Now King Charcoal already has 50 permanent jobs at the factory and 400 farm workers that indirectly derive and income from the company's operations, but this expansion in the business will employ at least 30 Namibians. Now, the current rental for King Charcoal is $5,500 Namibian dollars plus $825 Namibian dollars, which is 15% bet. Now, the lease of two hectares of Farm 38 should be set to a monthly rental of $11,000 um, Namibian dollars, mm. which is 0 0.55 cent per me square meters plus 1,650, which is 15% rent. In fact, as it is in line with current rental fees. Now, back then, Council emphasized this, uh, that this project will further underscore government's initiative to value addition to Namibian products and ultimately result in skills transfer to Namibians. Uh, since Council supports the expansion, although there are various requirements that need to be satisfied, uh, these include that no unauthorized structures or structures not approved in terms of the provisions of the standard building regulations are allowed on the site and that the applicant prior to the erection of any structures on the site shall obtain the approval from the general manager for roads and building control. Now furthermore, a, a non-refundable refundable, non-interest deposit of $10,000 must be paid by the applicant on the date of signing the lease agreement to cover the cost of rehabilitation of the site should the applicant fail to do so. Now, King Charcoal should also provide all services and enclose the leased um, area at their own cost. Mm. And in our final story, uh, Ramblers won the 40th edition of the 2020 SFC Xmas Cup League Division, which concluded uh, this week at the SFC Sports uh, Field here in Swakopmund. So the champions defeated OB11 uh, 6-2 in the final of what is... Beca uh, become known to be the oldest tournament of its kind in the country. Yes, definitely. Now, the Wenduk based outfit played um, eye-catching football and were deadly in front of goal during the, um, during the final of the four-day event. Now, Ramblers rushed into a 4-0 lead at halftime. Edmar Kamatuka's hat-trick, a brace from Tuafeni Leonard and a goal from Salomon Negumbu proved to be too much for a hapless OB-11. Yes. Uh, our opponents were good, but I, uh, our over, uh, but overall we were the best team, said Ramblers captain Polus Amutenia. Now this is the second time that the Ramblers, um, um, uh, it was the second time Ramblers, who are currently a first division team, won the trophy after doing so in 2006. Now I'm building a team with the aim of competing in the Premier Soccer League. Two or three years from now we will be there, commented Ramblers head coach Clemens Kaysep after the win. So OB11 found the net through Sylvester Yankees and Gerard Josep thus earned the Swakopmund by some 
uh, Swakop Moon based team some consolation. <laughs> uh, Ramblers reached the final by defeating SFC 3 2 in the semi final round. Yes, now OB 11, who have only been in existence for one month, found their way to the final with a 1 0 win over SFC under 20. Now, the Social Cup, as well as the Classico, which catered for players aged 40 and older, were the other divisions which made up of the and which was made up of the annual con of competition. Uh -huh. So, the Social Cup final went to a penalty shootout. After Sparta FC and Celtic FC played to a 2 all draw uh, in regulation time. So Celtic's uh, Cleofas Niala scored a last minute equalizer after Diego Fransman and Tyron Maton uh, goals gave Sparta a 2-1 lead which they defended well for long periods of the second half. Celtic's first goal in the final was netted by Jaco Majid. Yes, now Sparta's goalkeeper um, Diego Fransman proved to be the hero as he scored one spot kick in empathetic style saved one and saw one balloon over his crossbar. This ensured that the Wolfish Bay base team beat their Swakopmund rival Celtic with 4-1. to one. Mm. Fransman, who has been playing at the SFC Xmas Cup uh, since he was 13 years old, also walked away with the play of the tournament award in the social division for his area weeks. Yes. Uh, I knew we stood a good chance in the penalty shootout, as I am someone who is very confident when it comes to stopping penalties, yes, he said. Yes, we could see, we could see that. Yes, yes, <laughs> now yes. the Classico division was played in a league format. Now Kaiser Chiefs took home the spoils as they ended the competition as the top team for players aged 40 and older. So a beaming team captain, Butamaton, who is renowned for his on-field antics and tricky style of play, announced his retirement after the match. I officially retire after, after having won all the social soccer cups that I played in in the country. I work towards this achievement as a player, he said. Yes. Yeah. Now Chinese naughty boys, Atlantis and SFC Swakopmund will play second, third and fourth respectively in the division. Now the tournament produced 36 matches including the two finals over four days. Yes, eight teams each competed in the league and social divisions. Uh, social games were 25 minutes and league matches were 35 minutes long. Yeah, but you can still go ahead over to our Facebook page because we brought you the social and the league um, final games live. Yes. So it's still on our page um, from Tuesday. You can just go take a look there. Yesterday in the Rongo Talk, we had some of the interviews which you can also check out again. And then you can check out our website. That's at www.irongo.com.na. That's www.irongo.com.na for all the latest news that's happening right here in the Irongo region. Colleagues, we've come to the uh, end of a very productive and a very strange year. So, uh, Leandria, what story really touched you for 2020? Okay, I've got two. One is definitely the Twala Loka fire. Um, it was destruction. <laughs> and it was rising from the ashes at the end of the day. And I got my personal goal. I also achieved the personal goal through that fire. When I got... Um, uh, one story or my story on both of the NMH daily newspapers on the front page, three, <laughs> all three. And then the second one is um, baby Gabrielle um, Carolison, who was born at 23 weeks. She's still in hospital, she's still fighting and she's doing amazing. Spec fit and lekker mm -hmm. so it just, shows, it just shows that um, where there's life, there's resilience. Wow, yes. Ado? Is what story really touched you? Well, actually this year we have been obviously going through the coronavirus, COVID-19. So um, it really, uh, it's not really about touching, it's just what, what was prominent and uh, how um, the, the corporates and uh, everyone pulled, came through and they made sure that uh, they, they came out with donations, especially when there was also a, a fire uh, or big inferno of fire in, in Tualoloka 
and uh, people were suffering and mm. it was also good to see the the, the governor of the Irongo region taking a test and showing a good example and showing that everyone needs to get tested so that they can also know what their, their COVID-19 status is. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you, Ado. Uh, for me, I think a story that really rocked me down to my foundations and really made me think a lot about what I believe is uh, when I did a story about abortion. Mm. Um, I had some people Very who sensitive are, topic. Yes, and I had some people who are against abortion who approached me asking me to write about it. And obviously we have to get both sides of the story or all three of them. And I spoke with some people in countries where abortion is illegal. I spoke with some people who are pro-abortion. And it really made me think about the line between bodily autonomy and when is it your body and when is it not? When is it life, when is it not? You know, it really shook me back down to what is life about? And for me, as quite an inexperienced journalist, I had been working at about for about a year in the industry at that point. And I had to handle this really sensitive topic and I knew that I had to handle it well. And I think the revelation that came out of that article was a big thing for me. Okay. So, uh, Leandria, what lessons uh, did you learn and which ones will you be taking forward going into 2020? Number one, self-care is very important. COVID came, we were also in the front line still, basically. I would still need to give the information to the people out there. And despite COVID happening, we had so many things happening. You had um, Carlo Gordon mm. who went missing. Mm. We had the Tuala Loka fire. We had um, Plato. Shan yes, um, so many deaths and so many negative things happened. And it was all uh, basically, and then all we had to do is just get the story out there. Yes. And one thing I'm definitely going to take to 2021 is that self care is important. You need to look after yourself physically, you need to look after yourself emotionally you need to look after yourself mentally because um, as a journalist you're only as good as your mental health or your your physical health and your, your emotional health because if you've got a lot of rage or a lot of um, anger or whatever the case cooped up inside of you and then you just get the wrong story and it, and it sets off the wrong bomb at the end of the day so definitely self-care, self-care uh -huh. is very important uh -huh. Hello? Hmm? Yes. What is the question? Uh, what lessons did you learn, and and what Just will you from be taking forward? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, basically, what I learned is, um, you know, uh, let's. Uh, journalism is a very um, important um, tool mm. uh, that we that we have. Uh, we're privileged to actually be journalists, and uh, we actually are very important. What I learned is we are very important uh, people. We are needed. We are almost maybe we almost as important as the legislation okay. as important as the government mm -hmm. we are in, the fourth estate we are the fourth estate so we are we are there and what how we do our stories is very important mm. in in creating and making sure that the social or the, the the society out there gets the right information yes. at the right time yes. and that this information uh, does create change mm. so and it also he, um, keeps the people accountable who are in power. So that's, that's what right. I learned and that's what I'm going to do more often is to make sure that the corruption is exposed. You know, fish rot was there, mm. it hit our region. Yes. Corona <laughs> was here. Well, everything was happening at the coast. Yes. So we, we are in a region where everything is happening here mm. and we need to pull our socks up and we need to make sure that we, we produce uh -huh. the right content at the right time and make sure that people get it. We are, you're also uh, on the entertainment uh, mm. aspect. Yes. You said goodbye to the Namas. What's your take on that? Yeah, uh, the Namas, goodbye to them. And uh, well, um, it's a sad situation. Uh, yeah, MTC have to say goodbye and hopefully maybe there will come another sponsor. But music continues, you know. We, yes. we saw Gaza is now the artist of the decade. But at the end of the day, it showed artists that uh, what is your motive for doing music? Are you yes. doing it for awards yes. or are you doing it because you love music? So yes. now we're going to see who the real artists are uh -huh. and who are doing it for the love of it and yes. who really love doing what they do. Yes. We also had no soccer because mm. uh, MTC pulled out of the Premier League. MTC pulled, there's a lot of politics in, in, in football uh -huh. and, and sports as we know. But that's how the cookie crumbles and at the end of the day um, somehow our, our politics needs to get out of football out of yes. sports yes. so that yes. people can do what they love and mm -hmm. go forward otherwise 
everything is just gonna remain dormant yes. at the end of the day you know and people are suffering big players have to put bread on the table mm. and players are even have to go represent their country for namibia yes. but they're not getting match fitness yes mm. and yes. they're just getting fat and they're getting unfit uh -huh. so we need to put our egos aside and do what is best for the beautiful game yes, yeah yes. Erin, what lessons did you learn and what will you be taking forward with you i think empathy um because i mean i make no secret of it that i've been I've been incredibly blessed in this pandemic i have moved forward where a lot of people have been smacked down to the ground and um I think a lot of the times I had to look at other people's situations and empathy has always been a very important factor in my life and I had to look at other people's situations and really try to put myself mm -hmm. in their shoes mm -hmm. and I think as a journalist coming back to you two that's what makes it so straining is that you have to put on all these different coats and it's so emotionally draining yes. as well as physically draining mm -hmm. because you have to be there you have to witness it you have to feel it to be able to report on it mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. so I think empathy and just the goal of spreading empathy and understanding even the antagonists of our society but mm. trying to understand why they are the way that they are. Okay. And then uh, Leandria, your favorite moment for Hi. 2020? <laughs> your... No, I can't think of one right now. There was one where, uh, uh, while we were shooting at uh, the waterfront mm. and a massive bird came Oh, like, that yeah. one! Yeah. I, I think for me, that one, you know, and I was there with you, and we were presenting. Yes. And yes. then that bird just came, and yeah, definitely for me, that's it. No, I can't think of everything. Yeah. Was so shrouded in. I mean, it was New Year's, it was January, it was February, it was March, it's COVID, December. So yeah. <laughs> everything kind of got lost here in between the. But but for me, I think personally, perhaps it um, this year was in terms of in terms of my career it was one of the best mm. year, best years considering that uh, my entire one wall is filled with certificates mm. yes mm. <laughs> irongo story of the year video of the year social media post of the year journalist of the month video of the month the list goes on mm. so maybe in terms of that i think um, because i could actually see my hard work paying off and I can actually put some double-sided tape on the certificate and paste it against the wall. So <laughs> I think that that will be for mine. Cool. Adolf, your favorite moment? Favorite moment, um, it's not really to say it's my favorite moment, but it's just to see in the elections how there has been change. Uh, people are fed up mm -hmm. mm. and people voted for change and they have got the change that they wanted or yes. they who yes. wanted change got the change that they wanted and those who did not want change probably did not vote so mm. that is yeah. what they need to sit down and stop complaining mm. so i think for me that is the favorite moment to see um it's not like that i am affiliated to any of the parties mm. or anything mm. but now we need to see what is going to happen is exactly. there going to be change mm -hmm. is uh the people who are in in the fish rod are they going to be put away are they going to be more corrupt well, corruption cases mm -hmm. uh, are the fishermen going to get justice yeah. now there's people new people uh, on, at the realm mm -hmm. so this is for me very interesting and yes. i want to see how 2021 is going to fold out yes. Yes. seeing if there's going to be change if, if there really is going to be change mm -hmm. and uh, how it's going to impact the society as a whole yes. yeah you also pocketed some uh, u.s dollars <laughs> tell us about that yeah ah uh, yeah i received the uh, what is it the uh, first prize for um what is it uh, stay, at home. stay at home award uh, uh -huh. for southern africa for so that was a very interesting uh, achievement uh -huh. uh, also very uh, one of the best uh, moments for me in my career because um my only other award maybe nationally or so was the second place where i got second place to blanche choruses you know blanche choruses yeah. is very difficult <laughs> to beat yeah. and that was not television wise yeah. so yeah it was very interesting you know a journalist from zimbabwe zambia botswana south africa managing to beat all those guys for um, writing um, COVID 19 stories and it taught me that you know sometimes you need to just uh, pull up your socks and do what you gotta do because mm -hmm. at the end of the day uh, you will get recognized just like my colleague Leandria here has really been pushing me inspiring me as well and that's why we are 
we are <laughs> what we are the erongo 24 7 is, yes. is having over 700,000 reach now on our, mm -hmm. on our facebook page and that's because we are really sharpening each other as journalists here and doing what we're doing yes mm. Irene? i i don't think there's a favorite moment i think to me all the favorite moments were just the moments where the Namibian spirit shone through the people. I, as a South African born, I am completely blown away every time by how much Namibians love each other for the sake that we're Namibians, that this is another person on Namibian soil. And I think in a lot of moments that's shown through, despite COVID-19, I mean, you look at South Africa where I was originally born, and when they were initially put under lockdown, nobody cared. Mm. The moment we were put under lockdown, everybody was like with their little scarves, they got a, they have to go get a mask, and people were maintaining social distance, people were staying at home, no matter how tough it was for them. They were staying home, they were making sure that the next person was safe. And in the same vein, our charities, although mm. they, I wrote a story about it, they really, really, really struggled in the COVID-19 pandemic. Because the first thing to go when you are in a financial pinch is your donations, you know? So they were really struggling, but despite that, they found a way, they made a way to care for the Namibians who were struggling to stay home because they had to go out and work. And that was a really inspiring story. And I think just every moment that you walk by somebody and despite them wearing the mask, they try their best to smile at you and... For the eyes. Yes, the smiles. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, that was really beautiful is to see how us as Namibians we're coming together and we're working at something very begrudgingly. We didn't like it, but we did it for the next person. In terms of a newsmaker, who would be your newsmaker if you could choose one? It would definitely be Inspector Eleni Shapumba. He is <laughs> He's my go-to guy for anything. Anything that's happening, um, I, it would just be a WhatsApp away. It would be a phone call away. Like, Inspector, this just happened. What can you tell me? Yes. Now when he would give you the information. He always gives you good stuff, good quotes. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's definitely Inspector Eleni Shapumba, Community Affairs Commander. Huh? Ado? Yeah, my newspaper of the year would be the governor of the Erongo region, um, Honorable Neville Andre. Yes. Uh -huh. um, yo. <laughs> yeah, he got appointed in a year that was very difficult yes. and Dwaloloka is happening this side. Mm -hmm. COVID-19, we were actually mm -hmm. the epicenter mm -hmm. for almost half the year or so. And there were so many complaints that the isolation facilities mm -hmm. were, broke, uh, were not in good condition. Mm -hmm. and, and he's a very humble man. I have to say he, he did not, he was not pompous. Every time there was a problem, he would humbly look for a solution. And he was also one call away and he had a very good relationship with the media yes. where he's not um, trying to avoid us and he has press he had a press conference every week mm -hmm. and really being transparent and giving us all the information that we needed. Yes. Yeah. Irene? I think for me it's the performing arts industry. Mm -hmm. I um I think that the performing art in arts industry has been performing at like 30% capacity for years now. And this year we really saw them step up and say, listen, what if we teamed up? What if we added value? Rian Smith rehome to Namibia started a company that is aiming to essentially restructure the music and performing arts industry in Namibia to make it function at a higher level, yes, you know? Yes. We saw people like Eve, all the way from Germany, giving yeah. us that spirit with magic and, you know, just reminding us that it was going to be okay, that we could carry each other mm. through this. So, I think, and I mean, we had the, the Walking Forward docu-series, which documented how mm. the art industry has revolutionized Baco itself. in the Giants. Mm. Baco, Baco in the, the Giants, giant. yes, Netflix, yes. 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 The White Line, mm. yes, that mm. won awards, swept every award. Yeah. award ceremony it was at. So I think we really revolutionized in the arts and performance industry this year. I think we, we could sit the whole day here and reminisce about 2020. But uh, yes, uh, Leandria, your message to our readers out there, Stay our lecker. viewers. Stay mm. lecker. <laughs> uh -huh. I know it's COVID-19 and everything around us is going into literal flames um, and it's and it's just not it's not a good space none of us are in a very good space some people are in a good space others not 
but um, the thing is it is what it is you need to keep on pushing forward you need to if there is something that you don't like change it um, focus on your goals focus on your dreams I know COVID-19 made it very hard but the one thing that also stood out this year is the fact that people were thinking creatively like where where one thing um, looked um, or, or was going in the one direction some people decided like no I'm going this direction and some of those things actually work out very very well mm. so think outside of the box and just stay like a man mm -hmm. yeah mm. uh, my message is don't panic uh, yeah. don't hit the <laughs> panic button um, a lot of people yo we've seen a lot of suicides uh, this yes. year we've seen a lot of people are dying actually, yes. and it's, it's a reality a lot of people have lost their lives mm -hmm. very pro a lot of prominent people Yes. The likes of Dirk March, the likes of Mandela Kapere, we've lost mm -hmm. a lot of good people. Yes. And so uh, Japi Fansail. Yes. Japi Fansail, so many people. So and many. To, um, just stay focused and, and, and have faith at the end of mm -hmm. the day. And also another message I would say is to our readers, uh, be careful of fake news as well. Very important. Uh, <laughs> don't share that stuff. Uh, make sure, verify it. Um, yes. If you need help to verify whether something mm -hmm. is fake or not, Rather ask a, yeah. a journalist or someone who is an expert and mm -hmm. ask is this true rather than just sharing and a lot of people also got fines now. Mm -hmm. go to, you mm -hmm. can go to prison mm -hmm. or you can get a fine of up to 15,000 for sharing fake information. So that's my message. Um, I think my message to our readers wa would be that you're not alone. You're not mm. alone in the COVID-19 pandemic we're all going through it and as I just said us Namibians I think are really standing together and trying to help each other in it um, and I think you're not alone in waiting out the fake news I mean we're there we're always there to verify information you're not alone in your fight against a corrupt leadership and a yes, corrupt government yes, you're not alone yes. in your fight against your personal fight against mm -hmm. COVID-19 mm -hmm. maybe there are always people even though if you are sick with COVID-19 please don't physically reach out to people but <laughs> nowhere is far away anymore you can reach out digitally there is always somebody who will be there for you who yes. is able to assist and is willing to assist ladies and gentlemen our esteemed viewers there you have it from team Mirongo we remain committed to keep you informed, to update you and to let the news flow all the way in 2021. Stick with us and we'll stick with you. I'm with uh, Kirsten Kraft. Now you're a resident of uh, Swakopmund. Correct. Now all this rubbish, where what are you doing with this rubbish? Well, first of all, I picked it up whilst my son was uh, crayfishing. Yes. And I was waiting for him and I decided just to do something for our environment. Yes. And yes. I picked it up. This was all the rubbish lying within the vicinity of 50 meters. Wow. What wow. makes me very angry is that people, sorry to say that, but they pee here and they leave there. Um, yeah, rubbish. they're and rubbish, what, everything what, they leave behind. What type of rubbish do you Well, do the first of all, I was, very, I was very angry that I find a mask in the yes, sea. Yes. And I find um, this, to this um, toilet papers. You, yes. have to, you have to... Bottles. Yeah, bottles, yes, toilet bottles. papers. I find it on the beach. Now, what would your message be to people coming to the beach? Well, a few years ago, we started with It's Up To Us. And it doesn't help you put on a mask on your face, but you're killing our, our uh, environment. environment. Yes. Yes. If, we, if we kill mother, mother Nature, there's yes. nothing left for us to live, then we can take off the masks. We know the damage uh, this type yeah. of uh, 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 gut and stuff yeah. does to the seals and so yes. on. So it's, it's actually very dangerous, even for the birds and so on. What, what's even more dangerous is uh, the cigarettes. Yes. They, they flip away the cigarettes after they have smoked it and they think uh, nobody sees it. And so, the next wave comes and takes it into the sea and yes. the fish die. So, uh, solution? Take your rubbish along. Come with your bag. If you bring it to the beach, take it back. Thank you That's so much. Easy. Thank you <laughs> That's so much, easy. Kassar. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Hallo, auto's in Leandria, hallo Irongo, hallo, allemaal in Namibie en allemaal wat die keier, hallo, wereld, over die week het ons gekrismis en vandag moet ons natuurlijk ou jaar en ons gaan focus op pad veiligheid, het is baie belangrijk dat ons baie veilig hou en ons hoop allemaal kom veilig thuis na die vakantie. Hy my is collega Frans Wies en altyd belangrijk maak die saak hoe kort of hoe lang jou reis is nie, jy moet seker maak dat jou wiele in orde is, kyk ook na jou bande, is hulle stuif en die smeer, Frans Wies, hoe lyk die windskerm van jou, is hy skoon gemaakt? Nee, hy is veel, hy moet skoon gemaakt word. Maar ja, sal bykie later as ons terugkom, Karwas, nee. Ons rei nou hier op die nieuwe B1 tussen Windhoek, noordwaarts na Okahania. Nou ja, baie mooi pad, nee, Frans Wies, baie lekker pad om te rei ook. Wat denk jy, Frans Wies, ehm, Denk jy ons mense raad moeg vir padveiligheidsboodskappe en dat dit al keer altyd by mense uitkom? Nee, mens kan nooit moeg raak vir padveiligheidsboodskappe nie, want ek meen, kyk hoe lyk jy ongeluk syfers op ons baie. So mense moet afslaan op die veiligheidsmaatreels. Ja, ons het relatief min ongeluk in Fransuies eindelijk oor die feestheid disver gehad, 7 sterftes, denk ek die afgelopen week of so, en 4 in 1 ongeluk. So as het nie vir die ongeluk was, die sou dit relatief laag wees. Denk jy, mense gedra hulle self beter weens die COVID-19 materials? Ek denk hulle doen beslis, ja. Nou ja, waar jy ook al bestuur oor die oudejaar en die nieuwe jaar, hou dit veilig. Ons het een bykie inlichting gekry van Teklo Adamo, hy werk vir die Roads Authority, of dan terwijl die pad overheid. En die volgende cijfers moet vir jou ook thuis bring hoe belangrijk dit is om veilig te bestuur. Nou vir 2019 gemiddeld op hierdie pad lyk die verkeerscijfers as volg. Dit is nou vir hele jaar, as daar meer as 5.3 miljoen lichte motorvoertuie wat op hierdie pad beweeg het, en meer as 670.000 zwaar voertuie. Dit is omtrend 14.500 lichte voertuie per dag, en 1.800 lorries per dag, maar soms is het tot 3.000 vrachtmotors op een dag. Dit is vooral in die bezigste tyd van die jaar op die pad specifiek, is hier laat november, vroeg december, en dan oor die feesttijd is die pad eindelijk relatief gesproke stil, maar nog steeds een klomp verkeerd, keer volgens data uit daai jaar steeds 1000 gemiddeld swaar voertuie per dag en 9 tot 10.000 lichte motor voertuie en dan op die ouwens wat op ander paaie rui ook so'n bykie data, dit is daarom van 2020 nou, maar net tot augustus, die grafika wat jy nou sien, sal ook wees hoe vervoer afgeneem het tydens die COVID-19 pandemie en specifiek toe ons ernstige of streng inperkings gehad het, ook Hanja na Otsiwarongo is omtrend gemiddeld de duisend lichte voertuie per dag tot 500 zwaar voertuie en dan na tussen Reboot en Kalkrand omtrend 500 lichte voertuie en evenveel vrachtmotors omtrend 500 so as jy natuurlijk op die pad is, moet jy bedag wees op al die verkeer rondom jou, want dis hoe jy veilig kan bestuur. Hartelike goeiemorgen, ons keir hier by die padblokkade tussen Windhoek en Okania, en saam met my is die waarnemende streekscommissaris van die Koma streek, adjunkcommissaris Ismail Basson. Goeiemorgen, adjunkcommissaris. Goeiemorgen. Hoe gaan dit vandag hier by die padblokkade? Dit gaan goed, aangenaam. Dit gaan goed, ja. Sê vir my, hoe lyk die verkeersvloei? Ja, die verkeersvloei is soos die dag die progress die pick-up, particulier die kaars wat uitgaan soos na die noorde en die weste, yes en daar is ook baie karre wat inkom maar meer as karre, meer karre wat uitgaan. Baie dankie commissaris, en wat so ver is jylle grootste probleme wat jylle op die paaie beleef? Ehm Wat die mens kan sê, dat op hierdie stadium is, is geen groot ongeluk rapporteer nie. Dit is een goeie ding, 
Otherwise is man net die gewone uh, trainingsloop. Seatbelts en uh, seatbelts en speeding. Maar die, die grootste en die, die beste wat ik want kan zeggen is dat is niet ernstig ongelukken rapporteer zo ver. Dat is baie baie goeie nieuws. Um, wat jy commissaris dink jy die die verkeersvloei is ligter hierdie jaar met die met die COVID-19 pandemie wat hier is? Ja, if, as ons nou praat van na 9 uur, ja. ja dan, dan is die verkeer heel te mal baie stadig en in fact enige kar wat na 9 by die roodblok kom gaan, sal nie uitgaan of sal nie voorbij inkom nie. So, dit is ook om die, in die verkeersvloei is dan heel te mal van 9 uur af en die aand is daar baie min verkeer. Maar daar is nog steeds een of twee wat probeer inkom, ongelukkig, jy gaan nie uit nie of jy kom nie in, zodra dit, zodra negen hier slaan, moet jy maar blij waar jy is. Wat is een laaste waarschuwing of wat jy vir die motoriste wil gee, specifieke goed wapen hulle moet let, so sê nou man, um, moet nie te vinnig rai, ja, geef ons een paar wenke. Ja, yes, uh, wat die mens kan versoek aan die brede gemeenskap, die drijvers in particular, is om na die, die eerste ding, jou kaar moet padwaardig wees. As een drijver moet jy licentie het. En dan, die beste wat een mens kan doen is, reach home, stay safe, en uh, uh, rij stadig. En dan, uh, zodra ons stadig rij, en, en hou by die, die normale speed limit, dan ons sal definitief een goeie vakantie hou, instead of hastig reis toe, en dan ongeluk gebeur, een of, een of ander persoon uh, los hier so wat live, en dan, obviously, jy, jy, dan is jy holiday ook daarmee heen. So, a mens kan net vraag is, kom ons reistadig, kom ons uh, blijf veilig, en dan allemaal sal by die huis uitkom waar ons wil wees. Baie, baie dankie, adjeng commissaris, en geseende 2021 vir u. Ons hoop dit gaan uh, 21 wees, en nie it can be different than what gebeur current in 2020 is. Gesien ek hier vir sy almal, gesien in nieuwe jaar vir almal, ja. Baie dankie en ook baie dankie vir al die harde werk wat die Namibiese politie vir Namibiers doen. Dit is ons, dit is ons, uh, ons, ons verantwoordelijkheid. We are there to serve and to, and to protect, jammer vir die mixing. But uh, dit is ons verantwoordelijkheid. Die mense moet veilig wees, hulle moet vakantie hou en die politie moet sorg dat elke kinder veilig is en, en hulle ze Hulle is uh, eiendom is beskerm en dit is uh, our, onze verantwoordelijkheid en ons is blij om dit te, kan, uh, te voldoen. Baie dankie. Ladies and gentlemen, Leandria, yes. we've come to the end of 2020, I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not yet to the end of your talk. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, we hope you enjoy today's show with us. Um, it's the last Thursday of 2020. Uh-huh. It's the last Irongo talk, talk show, show for 2020. Yes, yes. But we will see you again on Monday. Uh-huh. So, we're taking a bit of a break tomorrow to also Definitely. enjoy our New Definitely. Year's. So please go check out our website, that's at www.irongo.com.na That's www.irongo.com.na uh-huh. For all the latest news happening here in the region You yes. can also follow us on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram And the number to get in contact with us is 011 7040 That's 011 7040 Now that's the number for you to let us know what's happening in your town And that's also the number for you to get in contact with us for advertisement opportunities and and as always is the case we conclude on a high yes and uh, i'm announcing the winner of our netbank desert des video competition nice and she is anna heinz 19 Ooh. years old nice. from soccer Boom. go anna congratulations yeah and she pockets a thousand namibian dollars yes. for her video of gideon the amphibian namibian ah. crossing the finishing line nice. at this year's dash nice yes. cool 
So please remember that we are going into a new year. The health protocols still remain in place. That's until the 13th of January. You need to wear your mask correctly over your mouth, over your nose. You need to social distance. And at all times you need to wash mm -hmm. and sanitize your hands. Because the only way we can get out of COVID-19 is if we take care of ourselves. Definitely. So until Monday, we wish you a happy New Year's Day. Enjoy it with your family. Curfew is 9 o'clock. Yes. Stop the luck. One minute for you, you have to be in your house. Play your friends, play your friends. And you know, yesterday I saw that a bakkie had tried to curfew dodge. And he is by the sea. And they are so. And they are so. So, as a belief, stop the luck. If you don't see, you're going to have to make it. Be careful where you are. The curfew is 9 o'clock. There are no fireworks. Enjoy it with your family. Reminisce about 2020 and think about 2021. Ons weet nie wat 2021 vir ons gaan bring nie. Maak die kracht by mekaar. Maak die kracht by mekaar. But we are hopeful. So, until Monday, enjoy your weekend and stay safe. Bye!